As the kidneys play a key role in maintaining homeostasis by filtering our blood, maintaining blood volume, and even balancing our electrolytes, they're going to need a significant source of blood and an adequate source of drainage of that blood. The vessels that are going to reach the kidneys arise off of the abdominal aorta approximately at the height of the L1 vertebrae. These vessels are the paired bilaterally located renal arteries. And as we can see, there's a slight difference in the route of these two vessels. The right renal artery needs to pass posterior to the inferior vena cava, the large vein on the right side of the abdomen, whereas the left renal artery is going to take a more direct route and be shorter than the right renal artery. Typically, the renal arteries are going to split into an anterior and a posterior branch just outside of the hilum of the kidney. Once they've entered into the renal sinus, these branches are going to split, and we're going to find segmental arteries dividing up towards the different aspects of the kidney. As we continue, the branches are going to get smaller and smaller, and what we'll find are interlobar arteries located between the renal pyramids. At the apex, or the base, of one of these renal pyramids, we're going to see the arcuate arteries, small arching vessels that are going to go along the periphery of the pyramid within the renal cortex. Branching off of those vessels at 90 degrees are small cortical radiate arteries, otherwise known as interlobular arteries, which we don't really see in this model because they're so tiny. These small vessels are going to course within the cortical tissue and actually reach the nephron, which is the filtration functional unit of the kidney. From here, we need to be able to filter the blood and then have it return back towards our heart. So we will follow a similar branching pattern of what we saw with the arteries as we follow the course of the veins beginning with the small interlobular arteries out here in the cortex, which will meet up with arcuate veins. The arcuate veins are then going to turn into interlobar veins, which will then drain into the larger segmental veins. Once the segmental veins start to coalesce and come together, they're going to form up into the right and left renal veins. And here we're going to see a difference between these renal veins as we saw with the renal arteries. However, the difference is now going to be on the left side of the abdomen, as the left renal vein needs to arch anterior to the abdominal aorta before reaching back to the inferior vena cava. One of the distinguishing characteristics between the right and the left renal veins is that the left renal vein is going to receive the venous drainage from the left testicle. This is known as the testicular vein. So if you want to double check that this is indeed the vein and not the artery, look for the presence of the left testicular vein draining into that left renal vein, whereas the right testicular vein is going to drain directly into the inferior vena cava.